Welcome back, everybody. This is part three of the case of Vital Home Innocent. And if you want to know more about this case, please continue watching. In part two, we talked about how Vitel Hong Innocence Gang, the Crossbarre Gang, is an armed group. And he told the reporter, yes, I have an armed group. I direct them, Innocence said, when asked about the Crossbarre's involvement in kidnapping. But when you really think about it, would these guys really have any clue who to kidnap? and who not to kidnap not at all in my opinion it sounds like he's calling them like dumb and only uh have the common sense or the knowledge to carry and shoot firearms i mean i could be wrong but that's what it sounds like to me because he's basically saying without my direction they wouldn't know who to kidnap and who not to kidnap so i have to direct them in order for them to get it right um so in other words like i said i feel like he's basically saying that they're dumb and the only ability that they have and the only common sense that they have is to shoot and carry firearms but like i said i could be wrong because i have been known to be wrong a time or two but he goes on to tell the reporter it's really the same people sitting with regional organization to represent the country if you choose to block them they'll call us and say i have such a job fix it for us then you hear so and so has been kidnapped or so and so has been taken hostage now I can't say that he's wrong because, you know, there are corrupt cities and countries everywhere. But I don't think that it is as bad as he's making it. I think he's probably adding to, like most criminals, adding to the um, nation's problems in Haiti. Um I'm not saying that he's the only one, but I do believe that he's adding to it and not doing anything to help it, even though he is being seen as, um, like I said in the last video, a Robin Hood of his community when he's anything but. And I think that he gets a kick out of this because he knows that no one will turn him in for the crimes that he's being accused of. Then went on to explain to the reporter, let's take a clear example, he said. We aren't able to travel. We aren't able to import or export. Yet there are still always weapons coming in. There's always bullets. And we don't have any representatives at the border. And we don't have any representatives at customs. Yet all of these materials go through exactly these channels. How do they get to us? He says, the corruption he describes is no secret in Haiti, like I said before. And it's sad to say this, but currently Haiti 
ranks 172 out of 180 countries on the world's corruption perceptions index. Over the past year, sanctions by Canada and the United States have accused former prime ministers and, and presidents in Haiti, among dozens of other influential Haitians, of corruption and financing the country's gangs and other crimes. I just don't understand how these officials can be okay with all of this unrest and unruliness among their citizens. I mean, there has to be something that they can do or that can be done. Like I said before, this is a very dangerous man. So I think one of their many options that they might have is to send SEAL Team 6 in because if they can get Bin Laden, I think they can pretty much handle uh mr innocent here which i don't know you know how they're gonna do that but i think that if they want haiti cleaned up they'll figure out a way to uh go in and extract this man without get anyone being injured or harmed or anything of that nature and it's kind of funny i didn't point this out in video one or two it's kind of funny that He's doing all of these um, illegal activities, allegedly. And his name is, his last name is Innocent. That is really, really uh, like funny to me because, I mean, how can you with the last name of Innocent be such a uh, violent individual, allegedly, and have committed uh, unalivings, uh physical harm to women and their bodies i'll say that and also kidnapped and possibly harmed or unalived children in the process as well how can you have a name like this but yet you're doing all of this dirt that is funny to me something that i found very interesting or something else i found very interesting about this case is that um innocent tells a story of how he used to have a business a legitimate business and he can recall um gangs and corruption being taken over by his uh business and that is why he does what he does now or at least this is a story that he gives um the CNN reporter, David Culver. And then he also took CNN through his territory. And he said he rem he remembers local elders farming in, I guess it was a city there called Tabray during his youth in the 1980s and 90s. But of course, we were able to harvest then. He recalls today he he blames Haiti's dependence on imported food as yet another sign of how the country has been mismanaged by upper economic opportunity. And he says that um, they are basically robbing ordinary people um, of these economic opportunities. And then he says before um, before all of this happened, he, like I said, had a legitimate business or businesses, excuse me, which included a construction business, a hotel and a rental car enterprise. He said these businesses were destroyed by powerful business invest in investors in the area or in interest in the area excuse me i don't know how someone can i mean i guess it could happen if things like mismanagement of funds and things like that happen and the resources to stay legitimate run out but i don't understand how someone can go from being a legitimate business owner to a corrupt a gang leader as well as uh, what some alleged to be um, also a 
drug kingpin. I just don't see how that can happen. But I mean, if resources run out for these businesses to be legitimate, it can happen and it will happen. Now, I will say this. I was in a uh, place a few days ago um, where you could clearly tell that there's no actual business <laughs> being run out of these places. I've actually been to quite a few and you can believe me when I tell you I get what I have to get. I buy it and I go far away from that place as quick as possible because I don't want to be in there when the FBI SWAT or whoever raids the place because I don't want no parts of that. I am scary. I am the true definition of no. Get somebody else to do it because it won't be me. I'm just going to be honest with you. I am a chicken. I'm as chicken as they come and I am not going to be caught up in no shenanigans like that. I refuse to and I don't know if other people feel that way, but I can 100% guarantee you I am that person who does feel that way. Although we've got innocent side of what he thinks was the downfall of Haiti, a lady 55 years of age, Marie Lucille Bonham, 55, like I said, she is a well-known radio and and television journalist who once lived in Tabar has a different view of what transformed the neighborhood to the desolate place it is today. She says she was robbed by Crosby members in June of last year. She says, then they kidnapped and brought me to meet Innocent himself it was the middle of the night and I was sleeping when I heard when I certainly heard a commotion downstairs. She recalls around 30 armed people broke into my house and began to pillage it, taking things, even food from the kitchen. The burglars demanded money and then apparently unsatisfied, they took her away with them. They drove for about 45 minutes. I was so scared, bandits coming into my house, shocked that this could happen in my own home. I know they are our rapists. They have committed atrocious acts and other crimes, she says. Eventually, they came to a stop in the dark. Innocent himself then came to her car and asked if she recognized his voice. Of course I did, she says. He used to give press conferences and was very active on social media. He seemed to recognize her too, addressing her by name. Of course, he knew who I was, she says. Everyone in the neighborhood knows that knows that's our house. But why they took me, I don't know. I still ask myself. She was released early the next morning without explanation. Her husband, kidnapped a week later, was not treated as well. Held by force for several days without without his medication, Pierre Luis was released by Crosby only after they extracted a heavy ransom payment from his family, she says. They moved out of Tabar immediately. It is what we call in Haiti a terror perdu, she says, of her old neighborhood, a lost territory. It's a red zone. A few days after my husband's kidnapping, gang members installed themselves in a house near the main road and were firing at passing vehicles. She has no patience for gang leaders claiming to be fighting to liberate Haiti. That is what I am saying. Just like she has no patience for this. And she goes on to say, why attack ordinary people if you're trying to stand up for people? The whole neighborhood is being constantly terrorized by armed bandits. How can the gang say they work for the good of the country when they also commit kidnappings and kidnappings when so many women have been the victims of brutal assaults? 
that is that is exactly my feelings like how can you say that you are for the people when those people that you're supposed to be for are the same people that fear fear you because you're terrorizing them just like the people who were passing by on that main road when they put themselves up in that house when they took over the house and started firing at passing cars that is terrorizing people whether you realize it or not so even though he may see himself as a person who is helping his country as well as his town and city that is exactly the opposite because he is putting these people in fear and terrorizing them he's not helping them um like i said you know I would be the kind of person because I'm so chicken. I tell him or anybody else, get somebody else to do it. I can't do it. I'm too chicken. I don't want to go to prison because I'm going to be honest. I'm too cute. I wouldn't do well in prison. I'm, I'm too cute and too soft for all that. But the thing that makes me uh, chuckle when I think about certain um, cases that I do is... How did I end up being so chicken and so soft when I believed, and this is my theory, um, I believe that I have my father's temper, but a lot of my mother's sweet side. But now let's not get the game twisted here. My mom was who she was. May she rest in peace as well as my father. So they weren't like squares or anything but like i said i have my father's temper and my mother's sweet side but my mother she wasn't like not a square either she she did some things too but i just don't know how i came out to be so soft and and, and sweet and things of that nature when my family is who they are and were who they were how did I come out like this? But I always tell people, I think the reason why I came out the way that I am and why I behave in the way that I am is because I've watched them and I've learned what not to do from them so that I can figure out a better, like a better way of doing what I want to do without having all of the legal uh things behind it even though a lot of the things that i have that i have done are not illegal now in many ways a lot of them are just wrong for different reasons or one or the other but you know we all have things that we've done that make us who we are today so i don't regret that but looking back on me being younger and some of the things that i used to do things that I've grown up a lot. I do not think that, you know, anybody should do any of the things that I've done because as a lot of people know, if they've listened to my uh, content before, there are four times that I know for sure that I was supposed to be taken off of this planet by the hands of somebody else. And I'm glad that I wasn't. So I was able to grow up and be the person that I am today because who knows what could have happened all those times and i'm glad that it didn't happen because i wouldn't be here today now me being the kind of person that i am i hate it when people gossip especially men because that can lead to a lot of trouble for people as well especially when they don't have all of the facts and they're just going off of what they hear or just because they might be um, upset at the person for some reason one one reason or another now I'm gonna have a story time about that maybe this week or next week I'm not sure but I will have a story time about that and I think you all will find it interesting even though it's not my story it's someone else's story that I know and they gave me permission to tell this story
Now, of course, when I tell y'all this story, I do have to change some of the names. Well, all of the names, actually, um, because that's one of the things that they requested. And maybe I might have to leave out some details or add in some fictional ones as well, just so that no one knows who I am talking about, because they did give me the permission to tell their story. Um, because they thought that, you know, y'all might find it funny or, you know, some people may even have things to add of their own to the story, like their opinions and what they think they would have done or things of that nature. Um, and I just don't understand why uh, men <laughs> are so uh, quick to gossip, but they talk about how women gossip most or first of all and they act like they don't do it but news flash they do um especially if they figure out that somebody that they know or that knows somebody else you know the chain of friends or people that they know has something that they want like in my friend's case uh they had an incident where the guy who they were uh talking to uh they didn't know that this guy and another guy that they knew knew each other and well not that they knew each other that they were as close as they are and i'll get into that uh sometime when i tell the story but it just it it just um it, it tickles me when I think about a lot of this stuff, how it does go, especially, you know, the contradiction about men not gossiping, but they actually gossip at the same rate as women do. And I just think that that is childish and they refuse to see how they are wrong in that situation just like mr innocent here refuses to see his wrong in terrorizing his community but thinks he's helping his community when it's actually the exact opposite like i said before i just can't wrap my mind around the fact that a lot of these people do the things that they do I wonder, do they even watch the news or read the newspaper or get any type of like news updates? Because I'm pretty sure if they did, they probably wouldn't be committing these crimes that they do, or at least they wouldn't be so uh, bold to go on a national television platform like CNN to uh, try to show to the world that they are the Robin Hood of their community when they're actually the terror of their community and people fear them because they know that any time they could be robbed and killed or even like in the case of the radio uh, personality person held, her husband was held without medication I mean it's just so many things that boggle my mind when it comes to this case Especially the fact that this man thinks that he's helping his community, but he's actually hurting them. But how dumb can you be? But unfortunately, guys, that brings me to the end of today's video. If you like today's video, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. Please don't forget to leave me a comment down in the comment section below. And if you are not subscribed before you leave, please make sure that you subscribe. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.